saw a big cop. All right, when well, we return to Timmy, and no, the bed is not made to today. I, I had a guest. So, sorry, my bad. I'll make it tomorrow. Getting off the wrong train. The first principle is that you must not fool yourself, and you are the easiest person to fool. Interesting. You are the easiest person to fool. I'm wrestling with that. Um, hmm. You are the easiest person to fool. Richard P. Feynman, Nobel Prize winning physicist. First principle, you must not fool yourself. I'm, I'm with that. You can't lie to yourself. You can't fool yourself. And you are the easiest person to fool. Well, I'll chew on that one for a while. I'll circle back like Jen Psaki. Chucky. I'll circle back on that. Uh, enough is enough. Mm. Learnings. Lemmings. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm beat, guys. I'm fucking tired. I'll be, I'll be straight up with you. It's going to be a low energy reading, but I want to get the information out there. Lemmings, no more. The blind quest for cash is a fool's errand. Okay. I've charted private planes over the Andes. Enjoy. Oh, he, he's bragging again, puffing his chest out. Damn, dude. But I, 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 he wants to show you what's possible, right? Because you want to live the lifestyle that he's describing or a lot a lot of people do so let's let, let him brag i've chartered private planes over the andes enjoyed many of the best wines in the world in between world-class ski runs and lived like a king lounging by the infinity pool of a private villa sounds pretty damn good to me uh here's the little secret i rarely tell it all costs less than the rent in the u.s okay so he's going to talk about uh, leveraging here what I call money multiplying you know with the exchange rate and whatnot in you know say Thailand for instance <laughs> but there's other places besides Thailand uh, if you can free your time and location your money is automatically worth three to ten times as much yeah okay so I, I see where he's going with him this has nothing to do with currency rates I beg to differ uh, being financially rich and having the ability to live like a millionaire are fundamentally two very different things. Money is multiplied in practical value depending upon the number of W's you control in your life. What you do, when you do it, where you do it, and with whom you do it. I call this the freedom multiplier. So what you do, when you do it, where you do it, and with whom you do it. Uh, you control. The, 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 it depends on the number of those that you control. Okay, we're, we're digging in. I'm, 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 I'm following along here. Using this as our criterion, the 80 hour per week, 500,000 per year investment banker is less, quote, powerful than the employed new rich who works one quarter of the hours, so 20 hour a week, for $40,000 but has complete freedom of when, where, and how to live. The former's 500000 may be worth less than 40000 and the latter's 40000 worth more than 500000 Or we run the numbers and look at the lifestyle output of their money. That's a new term, lifestyle output of your money. So you've got your money, whatever the number, and depending upon how you apply that money, you can multiply your lifestyle output and the joy the happiness, the fun, the adventure that you get out of that money. Options. The ability to choose is real power. This book is all about how to see and create those options with the least effort and cost. It just so happens, paradoxically, that you can make more money, a lot more money, by doing half of what you are doing now. Four minutes. Okay. Keep going. So who are the new rich? The employee who rearranges his schedule and negotiates a remote work agreement to achieve 90% of the results in one-tenth of the time, which frees him to practice cross-country skiing and take road trips with his family two weeks per month. The business owner who eliminates the least profitable customers and projects 
outsources all operations entirely eventually day one you don't outsource everything but when you get to be ninja level yeah everything will be outsourced so all you do is cash the checks like we were talking about the other day set the set the course set the vision for the company and then hire people to carry it out for you uh, and travels the world collecting rare documents okay uh, or whatever you're traveling the world to do and how about eating different types of food Mm, fat boy like yeah um all while working remotely on a website to showcase her own illustrative work okay uh the student who elects to risk it all which is nothing <laughs> to establish an online video rental service that delivers five thousand dollars per month in income from a small niche of blu-ray aficionados a two-hour-per-week side project that allows him to work full-time as an animal rights lobbyist. So that's the dude's passion, is being an animal rights lobbyist, and he has time to do it because he started a little online video rental service uh, inside a niche, not all gen general videos, but a, a niche of Blu-ray aficionados. Now, maybe that's when Blu-ray first came out and they're hard to come by or something like that because Blu-ray is kind of ubiquitous as it were, um, all over the place. Uh, available. The options are limitless, but each path begins with the same first step, replacing assumptions. To join the movement, you'll need to learn a new lexicon and recalibrate direction using a compass for an unusual world. From inverting responsibility to jettisoning, jettisoning the entire concept of success, we need to change the rules. All right. I'm actually going to end it early today instead of going in for a new players for a new game. Italy. We're talking about Italy. Me likey, but we'll do that tomorrow. Um, so he gave examples of two men and a woman who are actually doing it. Who uh, And that might be the revised expanded because he does add a lot of case studies from when he first wrote the book in 2007. This is the 2009 edition, and it does have updates. So those could be examples from that, or they could have been in the original book. People he knew, maybe taught at Princeton, friends of his that, that did that. Carrot juice. Yeah. I like orange juice better, but it's better for you. So, um, yeah, he's given real life examples. He's starting to get into the nitty gritty, talking about challenging assumptions, you know, the way you do business. I think um, if you have a business right now, if you're building a business like my buddy Rod, or if you have a business like my buddy Jeffrey, the apparel business, I think your thinking heretofore has been as many customers as I can get. Go out, throw the biggest net around the widest customer base. The more customers, the better. I think that's a natural assumption. And what you're going to start looking at in this book is as Rod acquires customers or as Jeffrey, um, you know, looks at his existing business, it's what can you get, get away with? What can you reduce um, and still have close to the same income? And could you get more business from those existing customers that are a pleasure to deal with and easy to deal with, low maintenance, I would call it? Um, instead of having to deal with high maintenance customers who really aren't doing that many orders. So when you can start to be selective and fire your customers, that's a novel concept. That's something most business people don't think about. But that's the kind of thing he's talking about to free up your time. And um, I think it applies especially especially to Jeffrey, the apparel uh, guy, and, and Rod, who's building the business, because they both plan to move from the United States, you know, um, semi-retire or retire elsewhere and they both want to have these businesses you know humming and, and providing cash over here it's a great plan i think they're both going to get it done but part of that is what tim did back in 2002 when he had the nervous breakdown and he eliminated himself from the business he took himself out and in doing so found out that he was actually a bottleneck in the business he was restricting the flow so if Rod builds his business with that in mind, and if Jeffrey takes a critical look at his existing business as he's adding new customers, can he can he is, is he just piling on it and building and building and building, or can he take a new customer who outperforms an old customer and just stop servicing the other customer? You know, it's a 
It's a good question. Maybe not. Maybe he retains 100% of his customer base now because they're all fairly low maintenance and all productive. You know, it's, it, obviously nobody knows Jeffrey's business better than Jeffrey. So, but, you know, once again, this is an idea book and you're going to come across ideas and hear things, tips, techniques, tricks, and try to apply them to your own business. Some fit, some don't. But the influx of fresh ideas is always welcome to a business person. So that's it. I'm going to cut it short today. <laughs> I'm tired as hell. I'm not going to talk about dating in this video. Just, I'm worn out, man. I am friggin' exhausted. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to sleep today. I, first time since I've been in Thailand, I'm actually going to just go back to sleep, um, at some point. Or oh, I'll turn on the TV and just fall asleep watching TV. God damn, I'm an old man. So that's it for today, about 10 minutes. I, I tried to cut it at 6 and it wound up 10, so there you go. Nice short video, easily digestible, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.